Greetings. This devotion is for the 16th of July, and our reading for this day comes from the 17th chapter of Acts, verses 16 through 29. Now, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also, some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this blabberer want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to Aracopus and asked him, may we know <clears throat> what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now, all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. So, what we have here is a really a wonderful example of, of God's form of evangelism. He took opportunity to preach. When he, he stood up and spoke for the gospel when he saw there was a need. Now, think about this for one second. It wasn't an easy thing for him to do. People did not want to hear it. Eventually, if we read much, a little further down in the text, we see that not all Athenians believed him. Some did. He planted a seed. But think if he would not have spoken. That, that, that would have sent an awful message to those who believed. If this message that he had was so important in, in, an, in a time and in a place where it was so desperately needed, why didn't he say anything? It almost has the effect of saying, well, the Athenian gods were legitimate. Right? So often. As Christians, we take this step back. We're afraid to say we don't want to ruffle feathers. All of those kinds of things, that, that awful phrase, don't talk about politics or religion. Hey, you got to talk about religion. Hey, it, it, we have to speak the message of love. It's so important. Otherwise, people won't know how important it is. And they look to those who believe to live and breathe that message. How else will they know? Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly God, give us power to speak the gospel message in all that we do, in how we live, in how we talk, and, and 
boldness to say, I believe in Jesus' love. Remind us that it is the way we live our lives and how we form our sentences that people learn and know about God. Heavenly God, in, in, it, it seems like our, our political leaders more and more and more separate. Heavenly God, help them be about cooperation. Help them be about compromise. Help all of us to understand there is not one way that is best, but rather a way that we can all live with. Heavenly God, in all these things, remind us that you are the one thing that matters. And dear God, we do pray for those who continue to suffer with COVID, new cases that are arising. Dear God, fill them with the healing power of your spirit. Bless all with the knowledge that you have gifted us this vaccine and encourage all to receive it. Dear God, we pray all these things to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.